200 years ago, Mary Shelley wrote a novel about a young doctor who pursues a reckless path of science unmoored from values and ambition unrestrained by conscience. Dr. Frankenstein brings to life a hideous monster made of body parts collected from slaughterhouses, dissecting rooms, and graveyards. And it does not end well. In certain ways, and not alone, over a decade ago, the leaders of the American Psychological Association also unleashed a monster. And for much of the same reason, the seemingly unbridled pursuit of greater power, influence, and prestige. And as we know, this too has not turned out well at all. The damage was first apparent in the anguished cries from the dark cells of CIA black sites and Guantanamo Bay. And it has radiated from there, eating away at our once proud profession. Human rights and psychology's do no harm ethics go hand in hand, but both are fragile and only one can protect the other. After 9-11, the APA may not have been able to single-handedly stop the government's bull rush toward brutality, but it didn't have to feed the beast. In painful and indisputable detail, the long-awaited Hoffman Report has carefully documented the APA's collusion with the Department of Defense in support of operations profoundly at odds with our profession's respect for human dignity. Yet in recent days, and perhaps not surprisingly, we've witnessed a concerted effort by some to discredit the Hoffman Report and to thereby resurrect the wobbling reputations of the colluders it has named. Among the defenses now being offered is a familiar one. We must not forget the context of the times, they say. Well, if those seeking to escape accountability want us to recall the context, let's do just that. For example, picture the White House Rose Garden almost a decade ago. That morning, a reporter asked a question about torture in light of the Supreme Court's Hamden decision. And this was President Bush's response. Quote, the Supreme Court's said that we must conduct ourselves under the co common Article Three of the Geneva Convention. And that common article says that, you know, there will be no outrages upon human dignity. It's like, it's very vague. <laughs> what does that mean, outrages upon human dignity? That's a statement that is wide open to interpretation. That's an example of the context, plain and simple, in which APA leaders locked arms with the Pentagon and CIA and embraced our government's abusive interrogation program. According to reliable accounts, years ago, peace activist Daniel Berrigan gave the world's shortest commencement speech, only seven words, to a graduating high school class in New York City. What he said was this, know where you stand and stand there. I feel very thankful to everyone who has helped us reach this crucial moment of truth, this fork in the road, in the road together. And I look forward to working together to overcome the obstacles and challenges that undoubtedly still lie ahead. As we do so, let's continue to know where we stand and stand there. Thank you.